Russian Navy, the Black Sea Fleet. After three years of defeat and defense, ships and sailors of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics prepare for the offensive. In the great ports of the Black Sea, in Odessa, in Sebastopol, invading Germans sit entrenched, holding the Crimea in talons of steel. But the year is 1944, and the high tide of Nazi conquest is ebbing. The Red Army is driving into the Crimean Peninsula from the north, as the Red Navy brings in more troops to fall on the flanks of the desperate Germans. To Soviet sailors, Sebastopol, with its magnificent harbor, is a prize beyond price. And they mean to get it back at any price. state their own harbor, preparing the way for the Red Black Sea Fleet. shall ever put his foot. But along 2,000 miles of Russian front, from the Baltic to the Crimea, the myth of Nazi invincibility crumbles. In the 18th century, it was Charles XII of Sweden. In the 19th century, it was Napoleon. In the 20th century, it is Hitler. Each of these conquerors has tasted the bitterness of the Slavic wastes. Each has floundered on the vastness and desolation of the Russian steppes.
the Russians, Sebastopol is a vital landmark on the march to Berlin. For the Germans, the loss of Sebastopol means retreat, disaster. Landing boats originally built for the invasion of England now serve another purpose, a German evacuation, a German Dunkirk in the Black Sea. May 9, 1944, Sebastopol is liberated. But for the Russian people, the aftermath of triumph is heartbreak. Where the German army fights, there the SS murders and the Gestapo slaughters. The heaps of innocent executed hostages are monuments to man's inhumanity to man. Before the German Wehrmacht is irrevocably broken, hammering in the east will find mounting echo in the west. And in the west, Germany begins to drown in the flood tide of Allied might. In the hard-won harbor of Naples, at Palermo, Corsica, Sardinia, the ships and men gather for the invasion of southern France. Operation Anvil. Ships by the hundreds, men by the thousands, will inundate the rear and flank of the Germans, who are struggling to contain the Allies on the Normandy beachhead, established two months earlier. And in North Africa, Oran, Algiers, Bizerta, Tunis, Alexandria, catapults for the last great seaborne invasion of the European war. Eight hundred ships will carry the liberators to the beaches on the far Mediterranean shore. And with them go seven French divisions carrying the cross of Lorraine. Back to French soil under General de Gaulle. Back to their homeland with the Committee of National Liberation. sails unhindered from Islam to Christendom, toward the French Riviera, the Côte d'Azur, playground in time of peace, battleground in time of war. up the valley of the Rhone and join the troops from Normandy. Little opposition meets the liberators on the beaches. But inland, the Germans fight, and the Allies fight too. Inland. <laughs> French army is back again, back to fight again, back to liberate their brothers, 
back to free their country. Churchill is there to greet him. A new name is being added to the vocabulary of history. Yalta. Statesmen, soldiers, diplomats turn an obscure Crimean town into the temporary capital of the world as the war, east and west, thunders toward its climax. Rome has long since fallen. Now the world focuses its attention on Tokyo and Berlin. On all the six continents and on all the seven seas, the Allies destroy the Axis. But here at Yalta, diplomacy takes precedence over combat. Vissarionovich Jugashvili, whom the world knows as Stalin, presides over the meetings at Levadia, favorite palace of his predecessor, Tsar Nicholas II. At Yalta, the Russians agree to enter the war against Japan, and the date for the first meeting of the United Nations is set. Other agreements, open and secret, sow the seeds of future controversy and contention. 
But on the immediate issue, the war against Germany, the conference is clear and decisive. The communique says, the timing, scope, and coordination of new and even more powerful blows by our armies and air forces into the heart of Germany have been planned in detail. Nazi Germany is doomed. Finland and Russia. The 
was Belgrad and Rotterdam, London and Coventry and Southampton and Liverpool, scores of unremembered towns and villages. Devastation remains, but the names have changed. Cologne and Frankfurt, Dusseldorf and Mainz, Hamburg, Dresden, and Berlin. convulsive effort of a dying order to save itself. The very old, the very young, the feeble, the unfit, herded into tatterdemalion units and fed into the furnace of war. For the Volkssturm, it is one short march from enlistment to captivity. <laughs> Socialist Third Reich. Hitler is dead, a suicide in his own underground bunker in Berlin. The new order he designed to last 1,000 years has died with him after only 12. The dictatorship that set a world on fire sputters out in unconditional surrender. <laughs> Thank you. 